I joined politics precisely in 2011 through my, I was introduced into politics by my husband and I'm an entrepreneur. I came from the corporate environment to business environment, personal business entrepreneur. So I started my own business after a while. Then I went to the grassroots, which is the market market. Getting to the markets, really, even my husband, my family were like, this is not your thing. Don't even bother. But I said I was going to survive. And um, I think I started the shop in 2011 too, from the Yanejibo market and everything. While I was on the market, I meet women with different challenges when it comes to raising, improving their businesses, the way they undo their businesses. And I talk to them. There are times I see some kids in the market and I'm like, why are you just around? And there's this reason, one challenge or the other. So I just go up, meet the mother, talk to them. Um, as my family will see on my market, I keep adopting different children every day. From Igbo to Yoruba to Aousa, I just adopt them and they always say, mommy, they call for one advice or the other. So 2011, my husband came and said, I don't think politics would be a bad thing for you to, this thing you are doing, at least more energy, channel it out and be able to advise people. So I joined, but I told him I wanted to understand what this Nigerian politics is all about the grassroots. I like to help on a low key. I like to contribute my quota on a low key. So when I joined, I needed a platform. So I came through um, People Democratic Party. That was um, Ali Mosho Access. I was just understudying the activity. But in 2014, I joined ADC because it gives um, it's a platform that encourages women, youth, and especially people with disability. I have a few people that I talk to that are actually disabled. So I came with a few of them into the party when I joined. And since then, it's been from one thing to another. I never thought of running until 2019. 2019. I joined the publicity office, office for the party, following them for campaigns around the Keja, this and that. So I thought of running after that 2019. Then I went back to my shell. I just wanted to do things on the normal, on the ground level, the support I could give. So in 2021, somebody asked me and said, ah, Mommy, why are you not running? You take care of people. Like, I don't have the money to run for election. But I'll inform my family member. So I informed my partner and I was like, this is what it is. I said, fine. I'll give you the support you need, then I joined. But basically I joined because I was really, really concerned about the women community in the market. And the market, the, I call myself the regular market woman. You see me in the market, and most first question anybody asks me whenever they see me in the shop is, you're not supposed to be here. Why are you here? I mean, it, it's interesting that, you know, your personal experience in trying to do more in the market brought you into a better appreciation for what you could do you know as a politician in the marketplace and i wonder if you could speak to the specific issues in the market you know that had you thinking hey maybe i could help if i were a politician okay i noticed most of these women just come into business without even understanding how to really go about it um i call them the af average wussy wussy person because i don't see them as a retailer they just pick this, pick that, and they just want to sell, just to make end means and make profit. And most times when I talk to these women, I always ask, so what's your profit margin? How do you, you can't use that big grammar for them. But I let them understand, if you're selling this, how much do you make? At the end of the day, what's the cost of taking care of the family? Because the truth is, and I always say it anywhere I go to, 80% of women in Nigeria, I don't want to talk about Africa at large, are actually supporting their family. It's, um, it's funny when I hear people say, women just want money from men and everything. I'm not totally depending on my husband to provide everything. At times, I think I see it like a 50-50 thing most times. So most of these women, I realize some of them are solely catering for their kids to the extent of um, house rent what they even use in their shop. So I asked them this question, how do you meet up for the profit margin? And some of them will say, um, mama, if I do it this way, sister, if I do it this way, no, why not try this? 
then with what you're doing, have you tried to acquire a skill? You take a loan of 30,000 Naira. You know, funny enough, in the market, we take loan as, as low as 10,000 Naira. They take a loan of 10,000 and repayment is like 15,000. And the profit on whatever they are selling is 2,000 Naira. You're going to have to have 3,000 Naira to actually pay off that loan. And at the end of the day, by the time they repay that loan, the business is over. They have to take another loan. And you know one funny thing about this <laughs> microfinance bank that gives them loan? They will not tell them they can move them to another stage. Like, if you do 10,000 and you repay, the next one will be 15,000 Naira. And they keep moving them like that. To them, it's a favor. But they don't calculate the interest rates. I've seen where women have their kids in the market to support them just because they can't afford school fees. I'm like, there's public school. I understand the standard of um, our public education, public school right now. I attended the public school too, in primary school. I went to Ayuadegbuiga Primary School in Ejigo. But the system is not that, for me, to be very sincere, it's not that okay. It's not even that conducive. And some of them can't even afford uniforms. They, their kids go with torn uniform. I think there was a time I called my group of friends in, on WhatsApp. We gathered together. We did something like um, save a foot. We got school sandals, sofas for those children. Just my friends. They just formed the WhatsApp group. And we gathered money. We went from um, a cartoon roundabout. We saw some kids there down to each group. We just offered them school sandals. and. Like, I don't really have plenty of pictures of that because, in fact, some of those pictures I'm not inside. I move away and... So, is that bad? So, in the market too, I offer them some of these services. I tell them how to go about it to get their loan. There are some that they will ask for guarantor. People are actually very funny. I don't guarantee everybody. But I guarantee people that I'm sure that, at least for the repayment frame, they can cope with it. So, along the line, Looking at most of these challenges, and I come back home, I discover my family, I discover my husband, the this, 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 this. Even my own end now, the profit is not much, but I have a skill. I'm an interior designer, interior decorator. I do that. But basically, I, after I left the corporate environment, I started with um, fleet management, trackers, car trackers, because I did OND in mechanical engineering, so I could actually install the car tracker. Well, I employed somebody, I trained. So some of these skills, the turnover is what I use in doing my business. And I always tell them, why not learn something? I have somebody who could teach you how to sew. I have somebody who could teach you makeup. So I try to bring them together at your extra time, maybe weekends. If you're not in the shop, you could visit this place. I don't have so much. I could cover up 50%, but just learn it. So at your extra time, you go, you learn these things. And for some of them, it's really worked out well. For those who understand, but you know when you have a family, you have kids. At times, shifting these two things might be quite difficult. So for those that um, are available, at times when I'm in the shop, I just call them, are you interested in art and craft? I could teach you something you could use to do design, like people who want to do photo shoots, you put at the background, you take your money. It's part of it. It could even actually help in that loan repayment without you taking from your business. Right. So it is the need to, you would say, help more people on a larger scale yes that has now driven you to politics politics so how then do you want to use your office because when you then go into politics you will not you will no longer be solely responsible okay. for or you, your attention would no longer be focused on this small community around you right mm -hmm. you would have to scale up whatever uh -huh. assistance that you are uh, that you are providing you know so how do you intend to take up, uh, to, 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 to take up more persons, everyone in your constituency really, uh, when you go into, the, in, into office, if you do make it into, into okay. office? Um, concerning the skilled acquisition and from education, I actually have a plan to create or build a skill acquisition center to encourage more kids, actually, between the age of um, 13 to 21, children between the age of 10 to 21. After school, they could come for one or two training. Because you know, most times we rely on the government to provide jobs for us. And like I keep telling people, there are lots we can do from our end to even better our own life without waiting for the government. The government is going to do its quota, but it's not going to touch everybody. So I intend to get a school accusation center in my community I understand there is one by the local government. 
around, but it doesn't take in so much. So I actually did a program for like two, two months. And two months, ideally, is for those in fashion sector. But for three weeks, you can learn more on interior, learn more on um, makeups, baking, and all of that. So I have, um, I have a list of skills that I would like people to acquire. Um, I call myself a serial entrepreneur because if I mention a lot of things that I can do, I didn't really go much into baking from interior design. There's interior design. It's different from like, it's different from interior decorator. <laughs> interior design is kind of very large. I just graduated from an advanced class in interior design. Um, actually, I can sew. Wow. So, I mean, so you're looking at replicating more people like you in your community. Yeah, exactly. Giving people multiple skills. Exactly. Um, I mean, it, it's so... It is interesting, but also there will be many other lawmakers um, who are looking to do the same, same thing, thing that you're doing for your constituency as well. Um, that ultimately means that funding yes. will be scarce. Okay. I mean, already it's limited. Um, you know what the current economic situation in the country is. So how do you hope to, how do you hope to finance this as a member of mm -hmm. Of, of the house how do you hope to you know raise the money for this in between the loans that you want to give the market women and this skill acquisition center that you're also looking at a uh, building how, how how would that be financed? okay right now i'm actually talking to some a few companies we had worked before and um some of the trainees i've attended i've spoken to some of my facilitators concerning this and um majority of them are positive and they are willing to assist I've spoken to my former chairman at my company about some of these things and he's also interested. So from there, I'll be able to get funds. I actually left um, a financial institution before I came into this and I understand how to get loan, how to run some of this business when it comes to the grassroots level, the kind of money they need and the interest that could actually help them. All right. Uh, and <laughs> in, in terms of, you know, just... Uh, um, being a part of the house, one thing that you might find when you go into the State House of Assembly is that you might be walking into a, a, a house that has an overwhelming mm -hmm. APC presence, yes. right? Um, there's the possibility of that happening. Um, there's also the possibility of being one of uh, very few women mm -hmm. who will make it into the house. I mean, we've seen the figures at the National Assembly. It's not looking good. We've actually dropped down in terms of women participating. Women presence in the house has dropped, uh, you know, significantly mm -hmm. from yeah. what we had at, you know, at the Ninth Assembly. Mm -hmm. We don't know what the Lagos State House of Assembly will look like at the end, but there's also the possibility of that happening. Um, how are you prepared to be a minority in the house, uh, both as a member of the ABC and as a woman? I'm, not, I'm fully prepared, funny enough. <clears throat> I don't see being a woman as a challenge, like I said earlier on. I see it as a strength. Um, I'm a good marketer, and I have good communication with people. And like I usually say, it's not about the party or the individual. We should be able to work together. I mean, you say that in an ideal <laughs> situation, that would be the case. We should right? be able to, but and I'm willing to work with with anyone, as far as it's going to benefit my community. To the benefit of my community, I'm willing to work with anyone. And I know these challenges will come. Um, personally, I had thought about it in one of this conversation I was having with my chairman. I said, it's going to get to a stage I might need to source for funds away from the house. Because at some point, if I don't source for this fund away from the house and start my own thing, that's what will encourage my people. This war will make my people speak up and also join me in the campaign for a better life for them. Because if I'm going to support any bill in favor of my, my constituency, as a woman and as a mandatory member, it might be difficult. But I'm willing to reach out to as many as possible in the house. In fact, private organization, to be very sincere, to assist. I mean, don't you think that uh, people, people, don't you think that we already have enough private government private uh, uh, participation in, in, gov in you know in today's world do you think we still need more that more of that yeah we do 
I did, um, during the campaign, I did a free eye test and glasses in my constituency, my ward, Okiafa, Ejibo, sometimes black. The intention was just to do a free eye test, give them their reading. But while talking to people, I went to get my glasses at um, the general hospital and I realized the cost of getting <laughs> one is actually not so affordable. So I spoke with the people I'm affiliated to in the US and they came. They came with glasses. I have pictures of it. They came with glasses. So immediately after the test, you go get your glasses. They give you your reading. You go pick your glasses among the reading. For those that didn't even see their reading, I had to give them, that, give them frames. So you have your reading, then you just go get the lens. So, and this is a private organization. It's an humanitarian organization from US that I called in. And we did this for two days. In fact, on the second day, we didn't want us to stop. And they kept coming. You know, one funny thing, at some point on the second day, I said saying children between 12, 8, that had eye issues and all of that. And I was like, did this just start now? I said, no, they've been to the hospital, um, but they can't get to see the doctor because of this. So this actually took me to the primary health care. I know in the primary health care sector, you might not have the optician to attend to you. But at least when there are some that what they need is just drugs for correction. At least if they could just get to the primary health care and they could refer them, it's a step. Instead of just going to the hospital to be there from morning to night without attention. So I don't think the private sector is enough. We need more assistance from them. Right. Um, I want to talk about just the general, your expectation of the general conduct of the election. Um, and I will start by asking for your thoughts on how INEC carried out the presidential elections. Um, how do you feel about INEC's performance? Um, based on turnout and um, statistics, I'll give INEC 60%. Because what we thought with the beavers, we thought we were going to upload results automatically. At my own polling unit, the agents, we didn't have voters card until I think 2.30. Voters card, you mean the beavers the, machine? Uh, the beavers machine, sorry. The and the, yeah. sorry, not the beavers machine and the ballot paper didn't okay. come until 2.30. At that point, a lot of people were disappointed. But you know, like I, um, the youths, I like their energy this time around. My car broke down. I actually trekked a long distance to get to my polling unit. I made up my mind and the young ones in my house I was surprised they were willing to join like I ah, know we'll be there and we waited from 8 a.m. till 2 30 before we started voting so for that alone sort of I was discouraged why should we be having our uh, ballot paper at 2 30 at this point, I couldn't even call up anybody. I called us after. We are still here. And nothing is happening. Finally, they came. We voted till 7.30 and people waited. I had to take my phone, calling people who had left because I took down their phone number. I'll call you when they come. And I started calling them. Okay, you guys can come now and vote. You guys can come. You guys can come. But at the end of the day, I'm totally not encouraged. Right. So 60% for you. Um, and based on the performance of INEC at the last out and you know, given the rating that you have given them, what are your expectations of their performance, you know, this time around? I'll, Considering now you're hold also, them you by also their, have yes, the skin I'll, in the game, you're also running. I'll hold them by their promises. Um, this extension was actually because they want to upgrade the beavers. They want to reconfigure the and beavers. Uh, configure the beavers. So I'm expecting they will do better this time around. Right. And... I mean, just, you know, if you had one message to the people of your constituency, right? If there, if you had just one reason for them to want to vote you into office, what would that reason be? Okay. Um, one reason would be I'm vibrant. I'm actually a grassroots person. I like to touch lives from the grassroots. And I think that's very important.
Because if you are able to build a woman, you build a nation. Right. 